everybody. Um, welcome, welcome to this session. Thank you for joining Data Lift uh, number five already today. Um, we are very excited uh, to have you here and also very happy to have Janina joining us for this session today. Um, Janina is going to tell us about her experience uh, as a data scientist working for NIME uh, in the area of bioactivity prediction um, of molecules for drug discovery. So very excited about that. Uh, just a quick note, uh, during the presentation, uh, at any time, just post your questions in the chat. And then as soon as the presentation is over, uh, we will go to, to, through the questions and hopefully, yeah, we have time for um, to address um, all of them. Um, and uh, yeah, after the, the presentation, this session ends, um, we can also stay, uh, I invite you all to stay a little bit longer and join the networking and also the expo area. Uh, they have, have very cool things happening there as well. Um, and I think that's it from my side, Janina, the stage is yours. Uh, welcome and thank you for being uh, with, us, with us. And uh, yeah, um, let's start. Yeah, um, thank you, Aline. Um, so I will talk today about the bioactivity prediction of molecules for drug discovery. Um, and just to give you first a little short introduction about myself, so you know what's my background. So I actually studied biomathematics at the University of Greifswald, which is um, in the north of Germany by the Baltic Sea. It's actually a nice area. Um, then I did my PhD in theoretical biophysics at the Humboldt University of Berlin. And after that, I worked as an r and IT project manager at Bayer. And since a year, so May last year, I started as a data scientist for the life sciences team at NIME. So to also give you a small introduction about NIME, so NIME is actually a software company and we have offices in Europe, USA, and we have very close ties with university and research because NIME actually evolved out of a, out of a professorship. Um, we have global um, partners that help um, spread the word about NIME and we also have a long-term funding. So NIME is already existing quite for a long time. Um, and to say we also have a pretty uh, long community already, over 10 years of NIME users around the world. And we have several different um, contributors who always add new functionality um, to the software and provide use cases and examples. And also, of course, we provide um, um, software support 24 seven. But what kind of software do we actually sell or do we actually provide? We have um, two products. We have the NIME analytics platform. Um, so it's really a software to gather, wrangle, model, visualize data. And the software is really open source and free. So everyone can go to our website, download it, use it. There's no limitation at all to it. So you can start with it right away. Um, then we have um, the second product, which is our NIME server, and that's our commercial product. So this is what we usually then sell to companies who really want to do it in production and use um, their models in production, manage, consume, document, schedule certain tasks on a regular basis and um, so on. So it's really for the large scale um, corporate companies. Um, so with that, um, what is NIME Analytics Platform? So you get a little overview what I mean with the software. It's actually a little application that we have and it is based on the graphical pro, um, programming paradigm. So it is really based on low or no code. So you, instead of writing Python code or R code or Java or whatever you learned, um, uh, NIME is actually made for people who don't know to write code. So they can use those little graphical um, this graphical user interface where we have those little notes. Um, as you can see here, the colorful notes and each note um, serves as a specific task. So it's a task performed on data. So you can either read in an Excel file, you color your data, you partition your data, you do a, a decision tree learner and so on. So it's really um, easy to um, just have a workflow as we call it and just look at the workflow and already understand what is happening there, what is my algorithm doing um, and you don't have to scroll through code and understand what someone else wrote. Um, 
In general, this Nine Analytics platform is very basic. So we provide then different extensions depending on what's your use case and what you need. So we have text mining extensions, network mining. We are, have a lot for camera informatics because that's where Nime evolved out of, out of the camera informatics space. And of course, we have integrations for Java, R, Python. You can also, we also have a node where you can actually write Python code if you're a Python developer. And we also have um, different other um, platforms or technologies that you that you can integrate and um, so you can integrate different databases of course you can integrate your different um, scripting languages if you are uh, proficient in that um, we also um, have specific nodes for machine learning and deep learning um, libraries so XGBoost, TensorFlow, Keras, um, you name it there's usually a node for it and you can use it instead of writing the code yourself um, we also have um, distributed and cloud execution available with NIME. So this is also really easy to um, use that in context with NIME. We have our developers really integrating that so you don't have to look into the programming coding part and you can just use the graphical user interface. And what we are having a lot is really the chem informatics extensions. So especially for the chem informatics space, you need to have certain extensions that can handle molecule structures and calculate certain substructures and substructure search. Or for example, chem uh, chemists, chemists actually need um, uh, what they call a sketcher where they have like a little pad where they can sketch um, structures and then it recognizes the structures and writes it into a database and so on. So all those can be integrated with NIME and then easily used. And of course, um, if you are familiar with Spotfire, Tableau, Power BI, Plotly, this is also really easy be easily to integrate with NIME. So just to give you an understanding what NIME is, then this is um, a workflow, as we call it, nodes, and each node performs a task. And you can easily see here we read in a file, we partition a data, and we learn a decision tree and evaluate our data. That's a very simple workflow that you can create. Um, but let's focus on our um, bioactivity prediction. So if you don't know the drug discovery process in pharma companies, so it's a very lengthy process and it's especially um, expensive for pharma companies. So you have this early drug discovery phase, you have your preclinical studies, you have your different clinical phases and your manufacturing. And this um, this process usually takes between 10 to 15 years. It's, it's actually a really long process. There are a lot of requirements and a lot of research involved, a lot of development and optimization, and a lot of money is spent by the pharma companies. Um, so especially in the early drug discovery part, you have, um, if the company decides they wanna find a, a drug for a certain disease, they first have to identify a target. So what kind of protein should we tackle? What kind of protein is wrongly um, expressed or wrongly regulated in this disease. So first they do the target identification, then they need to validate this target. Is this really uh, an appropriate target to have a molecule uh, bind to and interact with it? Um, so this all takes a lot of money. And then the next part is the hit generation. So pharma companies usually have a pretty large database of all kinds of different molecules. So it's around 5 million or more molecules in a database that they have. And then they actually need to find out what molecule does target or does have an effect on my target, on my protein. So for this, they then usually do this bioactivity prediction. So they, in the lab, they test a certain amount or certain uh, compounds. And based on those tested compounds, they can predict on the other compounds in their database, or maybe some chemists generate new molecules or compounds, it's called. Um, then they also need to predict for those newly generated molecules. Is that active or inactive on my target? And um, especially there, it's important to have a good prediction on the bioactivity because as you can see, if they um, go on with a molecule that was predicted as, as active, uh, they lose a lot of money if they later find out that it's actually inactive. So they need to have a good, um, good models that predict the correct outcome and are very safe to predict if a molecule is really active and not wrongly predict an active molecule. Um, so how is it usually done? It's similar to any other machine learning approach that you have. You have your data pre-processing, you try different machine learning methods. 
Um, you evaluate your model performances. You, of course, then need to deploy um, your best model. And what is really important in pharmaceutical industry is really to document everything. Everything needs to be documented, what decision has been made, what model has been taken, and this needs to be um, documented uh, very precisely. Um, the problems you are usually facing is that, um, especially for this use case, you really need input from a chemist. So it's really that you need someone with an expert who looks at molecules and understands how the molecule is behaving, if it's, I don't know, might some part of it might be toxic or they're really expert looking at molecules and you cannot just um, program a very technical pipeline or something because then you might miss on the domain experts input on that um, also if you just use a python a script or a jupyter notebook or whatever it's very error prone so you don't know if you actually maybe you make an error and you've suddenly deploy a wrong model that's yeah you just messed it up could happen. Um, then reproducibility is also one of the problem and it's time consuming to all this, do this maybe manually um, or you need someone who has really um, programming expertise but it's really hard to actually find someone who is um, good in chemistry and has a uh, understanding for molecules and can also um, understand all the IT infrastructure and all the programming and so on. So you really need a, a perfect person, let's say, perfect chem informatics with programming skills, and that's actually hard to find. And that's where NIME um, comes in, because um, that's the advantages of NIME. You don't really have to worry about the programming language, because we don't use programming languages here. You can just drag and drop on this graphical user interface. So we are actually enable the domain experts, the chemists, to create their own models. You don't have to worry about architecture, infrastructure. You can easily collaborate with other um, experts um, because you actually have this graphical user interface. So it's easy if I create one workflow, it's easy. I can pass it on to a colleague and they quickly understand what I did because they don't have to go through of my code and learn Python or R or whatever, but they can just see it in the graphical uh, representation of my workflow, of my algorithm. Um, then the additional thing is what we're having is this automated integrated deployment of a model. So if you train your model, then automatically, if you select your best model, the best model is then deployed and this production workflow deployed model um, is automatically set up as a REST service. So it can be easily accessed as a REST service. So you easily can send new molecules to the REST service and get a prediction on your target. Um, and also um, what we provide then was very important uh, from a, for the pharmaceutical industry is this automatic generation of a report or then mailing to a report in PDF, PPT, Word or whatever document they needed. Um, so let's actually have a look at this bioactivity prediction um, uh, approach or model modeling approach. As already said, um, the, we have this automated approach in NIME, so we have this data pre-processing, so we get molecules and we pre-process them. Um, in the example that I'm showing, I'm using four different machine learning methods where I do parameter optimization, then the models are compared, or the model performance are compared, and the best model is picked based on your criteria. And this best model is then built and deployed. And in the end, there is a report about the deployed model, which is helping to document everything. And this interesting part is really that this um, is automatically generating this um, production workflow. So this is done automatically and there's no, for me, there's no manual interaction or work um, needed to be done. And in the end, you can also easily with NIME create a web application. Again, you have the same graphical user interface and this uh, enables users who don't know, for example, JavaScript code um, to write um, interactive web applications to really bring their um, workflow um, in production and the model production uh, prediction um, really in a web application. So um, let's look at the first um, workflow that I showed. So this is really the model selection and integrated deployment workflow. And this is also how you see it in NIME. So um, already looking at it, you understand what, what I did there, for example. I 
uh, read in some data. I did some pre-processing here and selected the target column. I partitioned my data, as you know, I have the uh, four different um, methods that I use. And here I pick the best model based on the model performances and I build the model and I create a model um, report. So let's take a deeper look in the little notes that we have here. Um, in the upper corner, you can always see the overall workflow that I'm showing you and which part we are looking at. So this is um, the data pre-processing part. Um, if you're in chemistry, you have molecule structures, but of course, those molecule structures are not machine readable. So you really need to encode the molecules, uh, molecular structure um, as a series of binary digits and the present or absence are um, representing particular substructures in your molecule. And um, they're actually quite a lot different, as they call it, fingerprints. There are quite a lot different ways to encode your molecule. So in this little workflow, I, for example, used five different ways to um, encode the, mole uh, the molecule structure in a fingerprint. Um, and uh, this is also, of course, easily done because we have this RD kit, that's uh, chem informatics uh, extensions that we're having. So that is really doing the calculation for me. And um, I don't need to write a uh, specific code for that. So I can easily integrate that. Um, the next part, as you can see, is um, where we use the different machine learning methods. So we have, in this example, I use Naive Bayes. Um, the logistic regression, random forest, and XGBoost. And um, similar to SKLearn, we have a, a motive saying um, we have a node for the learning, so a learner node for train. And then we also have a predictor node, and uh, that's then uh, predicting um, or applying my uh, trained um, machine learning method. Um, <clears throat> in the next part, we have a node. Um, where we actually integrated JavaScript views. So this provides then an interactive view to the um, domain expert to look at the outcomes or look at the model performances. So they're easily um, plotted in this parallel coordinate plot. And down here uh, is also the overview of my methods, of my four methods. Um, based on their um, parameter optimization, different fingerprints were chosen. So you see before there were five different um, ways to encode your molecules in different fingerprints. So for each method, there was a different um, fingerprint um, resolving its optimized um, way to encode. Um, the objective function or the parameters were um, uh, optimized towards the enrichment factor at 5%. That is very something very common used in the chem informatics space. And based on this, um, the user can then uh, explore all their um, model performance measures and pick the best model that they selected. Um, and then in the end, based on the selection of the domain expert, there is a model report, which looks like this, which gives you information for what essay, so what kind of target it did. So this was TDPK1. Um, it shows the confusion matrix on the test data, the performance. You get some more um, details about your essays um, on what it was optimized for. And of course, your model details, so what fingerprint was used, what method was used, and what um, hyperparameters were chosen in the optimization um, cycle. Um, so this is the workflow that I would let run before to train and def uh, find my best model. Um, but how does the production workflow then look like? So as I already said, based on the training workflow that we had before, there are two parts that I need in my production workflow. It's actually this pre-processing, of course, and then it's the model prediction for the bioactivity. And as said uh, in NIME, it's really easy. So the part that I need in my production workflow later on, the same pre-processing that I'm doing, I can simply um, put in two additional nodes that capture the part that I need in my production workflow. And also for the model prediction, I put those purple notes in just to mark um, this part that I need in my production workflow later on. And as you can see, then NIME automatically generates this workflow, which has this pre-processing as seen before, and the prediction with XGBoost. And it additionally adds two notes. And those two notes are then used um, to um, make this workflow serve as a REST service. So now if this workflow is on the NIME server on our commercial product, 
um, people can simply use this as a REST service. So they can just simply send um, molecule structures to the input and then this is pre-processed, the fingerprints are calculated. We get our predictions from our XGBoost, which was our best model and our deployed model. And then we get back the prediction if this uh, molecule that was put in was active or inactive predicted. So this is all done automatically and here's no manual work from me needed or from the user needed in general. And the last part that's also really nice is to create uh, then a web application. Um, so this is also something that you can do in Nine because we have JavaScript views. Um, so this looks a little bit more complex, but it's actually also a very simple um, way to do it. So I just uh, created a little web application where someone can upload a file, so a CSV file or anything that contains then molecule structures. Um, those are transformed. Um, here I'm calling the REST service. So I'm calling my production workflow to calculate the fingerprints and predict my bioactivity. And then this is uh, converted. And then I have um, in my web application two optional outputs saying either I have uh, already someone loading a file with a ground truth saying that there's already a column which gives me if the compound is or the molecule is active or inactive or if it's really um, just a list of molecules and then I'm just predicting um, the activity on it. And in the end, the user can simply download, for example, an Excel file or any other thing that you want at the end um, to um, get their results um, actually as a file somewhere. Um, so those are the two different views that you can then have. You can have this table view and it tells you how many were predictive active and how many are inactive. Or if you get a table where already there is a column with the activity, then of course you can actually uh, calculate the confusion matrix and the rock curve and um, show a different view based on, on your data. Um, yes, so if you are interested to learn more, um, there's also a little bit more detailed explanation of this workflow and how it works. I try to keep it a little bit short to provide more time for questions. Um, but you can look, watch this YouTube video, of course. Um, what I also wanted to point out is that we actually have um, this NIME hub. So it's actually a website where you can go and you can search for other people's workflow and use the workflow as a starting point to create your own. And there you can also, of course, find the workflow that I just showed to you. And you can dig deeper into it and have a look at it and um, learn more from the workflow that I did. Or if you want to join our community, which is usually a very nice community, um, you can also go to our forum, ask questions if you want to get started or if you need help to get started. So. Awesome. Thank you, Janina, for this very great uh, overview um, of the platform and um, especially what it, it can do and the, the problem that it's trying to, the gap it is trying to, to fill. Um, so, yeah, really good. Um, thank you for that. Um, we already have one question uh, in the chat. Please uh, post, uh, post your questions. We have a few minutes left. Um, so, just um, write it down and we will uh, we can discuss it. Um, I think um, while we wait for more, more questions, Janina, can you tell us a little bit more um, about uh, your um, what has been your contribution um, to this platform until now? As a, a, and maybe give a little bit more of the insight of how it is to be a data scientist um, um in this context yeah um so in general for the software we have um very professionalized developers so that's their main part so me as a data scientist i'm uh, usually in contact with especially for the life science fields with our life science customers so i'm helping them to get started with nime and learn how to um, create those workflows and help them to support them in their need that they have for example we have pharma companies that i'm helping then so we um, do a lot of troubleshooting for them and of course i'm providing trainings to them to explain how it works and get them started and um, yeah we're also doing then uh, we have quite diverse um, 
diverse spectrum as a data scientist there we of course um, also generate new stories that are interesting so this is uh, of course this story that I, I wrote a blog post about that about this by activity prediction but we also have how to make data fair because that's also a very interesting topic in the lab space um, and then we also have a different blog posts about how to integrate your lab um, instruments so your microscopy also on and your lab automation with NIMES so that can be handled um, as well so there are different topics that we are focusing on and this is our more or less range of work cool cool sounds super and uh, uh, not only interest interesting but also super diverse right yeah. you, you involved with a lot of uh, different steps um, yeah. oh very cool um, we have a question from Michael Mm -hmm. It's about authentication. Um, when you deploy a model as a REST service, um, so I guess you expose an API that people can consume. Mm -hmm. How do you handle authentication for the API? And how is this API actually consumed uh, from other applications? Uh, mm -hmm. Or maybe the, the chemists uh, query an API directly? Mm -hmm. It's actually three questions. <laughs> so I can I can repeat if you want. Okay. Um, so the authentication part, so there is actually a node in NIME um, that you can then um, put there as well and say, okay, I need credentials or um, it depends. You can also have a key. It depends on what kind of authentication you want. There's also a way to authenticate, um, yeah, in Kerberos, I think, is also new. Um, so that is also available and you just have to set it up. So you just have to use a node before that and say, okay, I need uh, authentication for this API. And um, then this is done also automatically. Um, how is this, what did you say? How is this API consumed? Uh, yeah, if it's, uh, I guess it's, um, how is it actually consumed from other applications? Can it be um, integrated? Maybe uh, I'm not sure if this is was the question. Is it ca can it be integrated with other? Um, um, so yeah, so it's a REST uh, service in the end. Um, so any application that uh, works or can contact a REST service. So um, you have an HTTP protocol um, that can consume this uh, REST service and uses this API. So um, that can be integrated with any other application that is able to call a REST service and work with that. So um, that's really open to say it like this. And um, chemist, the question of chemist query those APIs, that's the thing. They actually, um, they are learning to do that. But um, of course, then people are now getting in more and more understanding because NIME is making it more easy for them. What is an API? How can I query it? We also have a little GET uh, node, so GET request, so they can also um, uh, call, for example, Campbell, which is a big um, database for molecules, and they always check molecules on that database as well. So they're getting a better understanding how how it works in technological expert, but they would not write code to query an API or anything. So they really then use those notes because it's an easier understanding to learn what does it do. And they are not with the technical and with the correct um, language or the correct code how to do that. So um, they just then use the node to do that. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, also another question from Michael. Um, if you have custom Python code, which uh, should run on a Spark cluster, um, how would I do that? Would I put the code in one of the nodes in the workflow? Um, okay, I'm not the expert for the Spark part, let's say it. So we have so many different integrations and not the experts for that. Um, I would now transfer it more to um, to a different part, for example, database um, queries and SQL queries. So we also have designated nodes for that. Uh, we have over 2,000, oh, I think we now even have over 3,000 nodes. So I really don't know about the Spark nodes in detail to say that, but um, uh, yeah. So I'm, I would need to check that out. But 
Um, you can actually look at the Naim Hub and check uh, check that quickly. Let's see. Um, spark writing exercise. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you have Spark notes that then do column filter, row filter, or whatever um, things you want to do on Spark. Spark decision tree learner. I hope you can see it now. Um, so um, yeah, you can just explore and find what you want to do in Spark. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Janina. I think that. Um, Pretty much, yeah, Michael is happy. <laughs> um, thank you. I think this pretty much uh, covered it. Um, I would have more questions, but unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, but again, thank you so much for your time, um, for coming here and sharing with us. And uh, yeah, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, I hope you keep um, um, uh, making improvements and uh, yeah, happy with your data scientist role there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you um, and all the uh, all the audience uh, in our next event as well. Yeah, thank you for having um, me. It was very nice. Thanks for all the questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody for joining.